What's up, y'all? So last night, December 29th, the fourth episode in the Hillsong, a mega church exposed documentary was released on TLC. And as a matter of fact, I actually had the opportunity to be one of the featured guests on this particular episode of this documentary. So I figured that I would take a few minutes to share my honest thoughts about this documentary, as well as kind of catch you up on all the things that are going on with the Hillsong Church. Now, you may be able to catch it on demand on TLC or sometime soon in the future. I'm sure it's gonna be on Discovery Plus once again. But as always, guys, my purpose and focus in making this video is to provide what I believe, as always, is a biblical perspective or worldview on what I consider to be a very, very sad and toxic situation. Now, before we jump into all of this, I want to make one thing very, very clear. And that is the fact that whatever unhealthy, toxic leadership structure that was practiced by some of the leaders at the Hillsong Church, this is not reflective of every single person who attends the church, who serves in a volunteer role, or maybe they're on staff in some sort of capacity. And God forbid we judge people who are writing some of the most amazing worship music that you and I more than likely both listen to in our churches or for our own personal enrichment because I don't believe that a person should be judged based on the conduct or the character of some of the leaders that they serve under or the, uh, the culture in which they serve. And for that reason, I personally still enjoy listening to Hillsong music for my own personal spiritual enrichment. Now, with that out of the way, what I want to do in this video is first and foremost, I want to catch you up and give you a timeline of events that have elapsed since the first three episodes of the Hillsong A Mega Church Exposed documentary dropped last year, March 24th. We'll get into that in just a moment. But more importantly, I want to give you some specific things that you can look out for so that as you're seeing some of these things in your church culture and in your environment, you will be able to identify them, hopefully expose them and ultimately leave an unhealthy, healthy, excuse me, church culture before it impacts you in a negative way. So let's jump into the timeline and the main date that I need you to keep in mind throughout this entire timeline is March 24th, 2000. 22. That is the day that Hillsong Mega Church Exposed documentary was first published or released on Discovery Plus. The first three episodes, the last one, the fourth one was released last night. But keep that date, March 24th, 2022, in your mind as we kind of go through the timeline. Okay, let's jump in. So the first major date is January 30th, 2022. And it is on this date that Brian Houston, who is the lead pastor of Hillsong Church, makes a public announcement that he is gonna take a one year leave of absence from the church. And this date is very, very important. So I wanna make sure you know that. We're gonna come back to that in just a second. But basically the leadership and Brian Houston seem to suggest that the purpose of this is really to give Brian Houston time to deal with some of the legal accusations and some of the court proceedings surrounding the idea that he failed to report some of his father's sexual misconduct. His father had some sex crimes and apparently uh, Brian Houston is alleged to have known about this and he failed to report it and as a result, he needed time to deal with some of these court proceedings. Now, what's very, very interesting about this, and this is one of the things that the documentary points out, is the fact that it was known, as we're going to see in just a moment, that the church knew about Pastor Brian Houston's sexual misconduct before he made this announcement. But the decision for him to take a step back for a year 
didn't they didn't seem to suggest that he needed time to deal with some of his personal indiscretions but it was kind of caged under this idea that hey he needs time to deal with what we already know is going on which is his failure to report his father's sex crimes now something else that's interesting about this date is that not too long after he announces he's going to take a year of absence from the church we actually see Pastor Houston preaching stateside here in the United States, which is very interesting because if he was going to take a year off of ministry to process things and really kind of deal with some of the things that are going on, it's interesting that he would still find time to preach statewide. Now let's fast forward to one of the most important dates in this entire chronology, and that's March 18th, 2022. So essentially the interim pastor, whose name is Phil Dooley, he calls this all staff emergency meeting. Now remember, this is six days before the documentary releases and everybody knows because the trailer, I believe was released in February 18th. So there was some talk and chatter about what could be in this trailer. What do we, what, what do we not know that they're gonna release? Things like that. So six days before the, tr the actual documentary is released, Phil Dooley calls this, uh, this all staff emergency meeting sending people into a frenzy, a frantic, what's going on. And it's in this meeting, and I'll put a link to the particular video uh, if you wanna watch it, it's a 26 minute video, you can watch it below. But basically in this meeting, uh, there were two things that uh, the interim pastor, Phil Dooley, brought to his staff's attention. And both of them were sexual indiscretions by lead pastor, Brian Houston. The first was an incident that happened about a decade ago, and apparently uh, Brian Houston uh, sent an inappropriate, a series of inappropriate text messages to a staffer at that church, so much so that that staffer ended up leaving the church. And so this was one of the things that they actually talked about and he exposed and shared with the staff at this time, with his wife, Bobby Houston, actually present in this meeting. Now, while Phil Dooley is sharing this, what I find interesting is that the general manager of Hillsong, George Agajanian, I think I pronounced his name, he interrupts Phil and he basically says, well, uh, Pastor Brian Houston was on anxiety medica uh, medication at this time. And so that more than likely probably explains why he sent these inappropriate text messages. I want you to keep that in mind because there is this thread that seems to be uh, going through uh, the leadership at Hillsong, which is the idea of covering certain things up or not taking full responsibility, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Now, the second incident is the one that's even more troubling, and this happened in 2019, and this was at Hillsong's annual uh, conference, church conference, and apparently there was a lot of drinking going on, so much so that Pastor Houston was uh, very, very inebriated, if you will, and he apparently went up to his hotel room, couldn't find the keys to get into his hotel room, so he went to the room next to him, which was the room of a, of a particular woman, and he was in that room with that woman for 40 minutes. But then whenever he was asked about what happened in that room, apparently he said he did not have any recollection of what happened in that room, but he said it wasn't sexual. And then the woman didn't necessarily say it wasn't sexual. She just didn't say she had any recollection. She said she didn't have any recollection of what happened. Now, this is very, very interesting because there's, there's problems here all over the place. First and foremost, as a pastor, should you be drinking? Matter of fact, no, you shouldn't. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 3 says you shouldn't be given to much wine. So you should not be drinking enough to get to the point where you don't recall what you actually did or did not do with another woman. So either A, he was drunk, which is a problem, is a sin, or B, he did something that he knew that he shouldn't, and as a result, he's trying to cover it up by saying that he did not remember. Uh, and then also, once again, they said that he could be on the anxiety medication as well, and that may have affected things as well. Now, we'll come back to that, but these were the two things that were covered 
by the interim pastor in this all staff meeting. Once again, link below if you want to watch the entire 26 minute video. Another thing that was discussed in this particular all staff meeting was that there was compensation given to both women who were involved with these indiscretions. Another thing that Pastor Phil Dooley uh, talked about in this meeting was that the board at Hillsong became aware of these indiscretions sometime third or fourth quarter or late 2021. Once again, that's very interesting because we remember that Brian Houston made an announcement to step down in January 30th of 2022. And it was said at that time that the reason why he was stepping down was to deal with his father's uh, sex crimes and things like that. At this time, the leadership knew that uh, that there were some indiscretions and they chose not to uh, expose that. As a matter of fact, Phil Dooley says this. He says, but in these situations, in light of what has happened with the evidence that was before the global board, the decision was made to offer, I suppose, what I would call grace and not to cover up, but to not expose. Okay, so now we're gonna fast forward to March 23rd. And keep in mind, this is now one day before the Hillsong documentary is published. And it's on this day that Pastor Brian Houston actually resigns from being the head pastor of Hillsong. Now, this is also very, very interesting as well in terms of the timing of this. Now, this is speculation, but could it be that he decided to resign one day before in a way to somewhat circumvent or control the narrative because he wasn't aware, no one in Hillsong was fully aware of what this documentary was going to expose. And it would have looked bad if this documentary exposed all of these things and then he resigned later after all of this stuff was out there. So it was like, hey, let me take a preemptive strike. Let, let me let me take a preventative measure and let me uh, resign because I kind of know what I've done. So I need to resign before anything comes out so that it looks like I'm not necessarily trying to cover up or trying to hide anything. Now, fast forward to one day after the documentary is released, and this is bringing us to March 25th, 2022. And uh, essentially, there was an internal investigation commissioned by Hillsong. And it was leaked to the Christian Post regarding a Hillsong New York City pastor, Reed Bogard. All right. And basically in this report, there was allegations of heavy drinking and bullying staff. And it was also uh, discovered that Bogard had a months long affair with a junior staffer at Hillsong New York City. And without going into all the details, uh, essentially um, the church knew about this particular affair that the pastor was having, but then uh, some time elapsed, he was sat down for a little while, and then later on he was actually promoted to be the lead pastor of the Dallas uh, uh, campus, the Hillsong campus here where I live in Dallas, Texas. Now, even though the report says that Hillsong Church knew about this affair back in 2013, when Pastor Brian Houston was asked about it, he categorically denied having any knowledge of the allegation against Bogard before making him lead pastor of Hillsong Dallas. Okay, now fast forward now to April 11th, and we're going somewhere with all of these dates, but this was another huge development within the Hillsong Church saga, if you will, and essentially there was an explosive internal investigation that was commissioned by Hillsong Global to look into Carl Lenz and Hillsong New York City. And this was also once again leaked to the Christian Post. And I'm gonna read some of the things that uh, this report uh, leaked regarding these uh, uh, certain things that were going on in uh, Hillsong New York City. First and foremost was uh, talking about Carl Lenz's um, uh, leadership and the fact that he had free reign to pretty much do whatever he want. The report says this, it appears that effective management and accountability of Lentz was non-existent. 
This lack of oversight permitted Carl Lentz to assume the role of final arbiter in what was proper behavior for everyone in New York, himself included. With the benefit of hindsight, given Lentz's personal limitations, this was a recipe for trouble. The second thing that the report talked about was the abusive leadership toxic culture that was going on. It was not uncommon for volunteers and staff who had frequent interaction with Carl Lentz to report that such interaction had caused them to suffer from mental illness. A third thing that the report talked about was this idea of covering up and coercion. It says, sexual misconduct, including multiple misdeeds by Lentz and the alleged circulation by other staffers of, I'm not gonna say the word, blank photos, to staffers and volunteers was covered up. Some staff who gave depositions claimed that many who reported or attempted to report misconduct faced retaliation. So did you hear that? Here you are, you're trying to report what you see, what you know is going on, what you hear is going on, and you are now facing retaliation because you're speaking up about what you see. Now, the last thing that this report, among many things we're gonna talk about here, is the uh, the indiscretions or the affairs that Carl Lentz had. Lentz described receiving frequent massages, though he would not provide details. He admitted to the affair with Renin and two others during his time at Hillsong, New York City, one of which was with the Lentz family nanny, Leona Kimes. And if you want to read her perspective of what happened between her the nanny and Carl Lentz. I'll put a link to that um, that uh, article down in the description below. Now, the last thing that we're going to take a look at before we look at how to identify some of these things in your church, and also more importantly, what is a path forward in terms of if you do see these things, what you should do, is something that happened in August 12th, and there was a former Hillsong employee. Her name is Natalie Moses. She was in the financial department. And basically she raised a lawsuit against Hillsong Church, basically uh, discussing and pointing out and exposing much of the mismanagement of funds that were going on in the leadership of Hillsong Church. She mentions things like serious financial misconduct, dubious financial record keeping, misappropriation of church finances, offloading millions of dollars through overseas entities to avoid government scrutiny and using tax-free money to pay quote-unquote large cash gifts to Brian Houston and his family. Okay, so I wanted to share that timeline with you to bring you up to speed. And hopefully as you've been listening to these things, you have been taking notes of some of the things that you need to look out for if you see a toxic, unhealthy type of culture. But I want to now highlight some of the things that I um, uh, saw and things that I've seen personally, things I've you know, heard about from other people, but also looking at this documentary and I wanna list a few of them for you. First and foremost, when questioning is considered negative or challenging, that is a sign of an unhealthy, toxic church culture. If you are serving at a church in any capacity, and when you bring up a concern or a question, or you have an observation of how things should be done, and it is not received well by the leadership, and you are shunned, you are humiliated, you are marginalized, you are blacklisted, and you are labeled as rebellious simply because you are trying to challenge or bring awareness to something that is going on in that church that you have a genuine concern about because you're a member of that church, that is a huge sign, my friend, of an unhealthy, toxic church environment. The second characteristic of an unhealthy, toxic church environment is when fear is the preeminent emotion that drives how people interact with the leaders. There's a sense of fear. I'm afraid of bringing my concerns up. I'm afraid uh, of what might happen to me if I challenge certain things or if I share certain things or if I befriend someone who maybe has been excommunicated from the church or 
I'm afraid if I make a mistake that I'm going to be called out. I'm going to be embarrassed. I'm going to be humiliated. When this is the dominant emotion that people who serve at the church feel, that is an unhealthy, toxic church environment. Number three is when the church does not take strong action to discipline sinning members and more specifically leaders. This is a huge problem. I did a video on this not too long ago in our Church Gone Wild series, but basically when you have a church member and a leader who is sinning, living in sin, and you are made aware of it, and you are covering it up because you want to protect the image of the church, that is a huge problem. That's a sin, right? To go against what the scriptures say. And what you're doing is you are encouraging other people, which is what happened at Hillsong, that they can get away with doing the same thing because the people who are doing it are not being held accountable, which leads me to my fourth area of concern is that when you have leaders who basically do not have strong accountability, they are able to do what they want. They don't answer to anybody or the people that they answer to are people that they have selected to surround themselves with that will not challenge them, that will not ask them difficult questions, that will not go against the grain or challenge the status quo. And as a result, they're leading the ship, they're making all the decisions, and no one can question them because there is no accountability. Number five, when you see a huge disparity between what you see in public on Sunday morning and what you see behind closed doors. My friend, this is a huge one. When you see a, 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 a wonderful production, a beautiful Sunday morning service on uh, at your church, but then you are in leadership and you have the opportunity to see behind closed doors what was really going on, how these people really treat people, how they really live their lives, and it's very different from, uh, from what you see in public, that's a problem. When you see flirting and heavy drinking going on behind closed doors, cursing, telling dirty jokes, sharing inappropriate text messages and all that stuff, it's okay, but you don't see that on Sunday morning, that's a problem. When you see people asking for members to give money uh, to their church to donate, but then you see uh, these people and you know you have knowledge that they are uh, mismanaging the money at the church and they're receiving money and they're using money uh, for their own personal life and enrichment, that's a problem. Now, the last one that I'm gonna talk about in this video is, I'll just lump them all in, bullying, manipulation, and uh, humiliation, and basically just a culture of control. When you're serving in a, a situation where uh, you're being controlled, you feel like you're controlled, you feel like uh, the leadership wants to control what you do, you got you signing NDAs and anti-compete clauses and, and different things like that, that are, are um, extreme signs of control, unhealthy control, or you're being humiliated, embarrassed, or bullied, any of these type of signs are clear and obvious signs of an unhealthy church culture. So finally, what do you do if you find yourself in this situation? Well, number one, the Bible talks about praying for your leaders. Spend some time, extra time, truly praying and asking God to change their hearts and to get them to repent before the Lord has to humble them. The goal would be that we would humble ourselves before we allow the Lord to humble us. The second thing that I would uh, encourage you to do is to challenge your leaders. Don't be afraid to challenge them. Ask God to give you the courage, the boldness, and the wisdom to be able to challenge your leaders to step up and lead in a godly, courageous, 
and God-honoring way. And the last thing I would say is don't be afraid to get other people involved. If your challenges, if your concerns are not being heard and they're not being received, it's time to get other people involved. Maybe it's the elder board. Maybe it's other pastors. Maybe it's another local pastor that's connected with this pastor who has their ear. But get other people involved. My friend, why? Because the stakes are too high. We cannot continue to have leaders of churches, mega churches, falling into sin because there's not the accountability present. So once again, my friend, my purpose in making this video is always for you. My heart is for you. And that is that you would be able to easily and quickly identify signs of an unhealthy, toxic church culture and hopefully remove yourself from that culture before it has significant emotional, spiritual, and mental traumatic damage on you. I've seen it happen so many times. Some people never recover and they never go back to church. Other people are strong enough to do that. My prayer is that God will show you how your church may be expressing or demonstrating some of these things in a negative way. The last piece of advice I'll give you is the one I always say. Please don't allow any negative church experience to keep you from committing and trying to find a healthy church. There's no perfect church, but there are healthy churches with healthy leaders. And I can attest to the fact that I, I go to a wonderful church in spite of some of the things that I've experienced. Healthy church, healthy leaders, healthy culture. It is possible for you to find that. And when you do, serve, attend, and trust God. So my friends, I know this was a, a kind of a long video, but I really wanted to share my thoughts, first and foremost, about the documentary. Second of all, the timeline of events to get you caught up on what was going on with Hillsong, but also to give you some tangible things that you can look for as well. So I'd uh, love to hear your thoughts. Did you see the documentary? Um, I wasn't featured in it that much, uh, but um, if you saw it, you had some thoughts, let me know in the comments below, or if you have any thoughts about this whole Hillsong thing, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'll see you in a few days. Bye for now.